Hey, welcome back tubers. So you've built a power wall and it's all sitting on the wall, nice and clean and neat and tidy. You've provisioned it, it's up and running, but what should you do next? Well, I recommend knowing exactly what you've got. Not just testing every cell, or actually put it into service and test what you have. So that's what I plan on doing today. I'm gonna to use the Batrium Watchmon Toolkit and the Watchmon 7 to actually measure the capacity of the battery. I'm gonna use this little inverter here and I'm gonna use the lights above my head as a light. So I'll run 150 watts off this battery. I'll turn the solar charge controller off, the PCM60X, and we will just, just run on batteries alone and see how long it lasts. Now this is a really good test if you're actually building or commissioning your power wall or even to do after 12 months. Uh, it easily and quickly points out lower cell packs. So let's get started. For me to complete this test, I'm gonna to have to change a few settings. At the moment, I've got the PCM60X charge controller charging the batteries, but it's only set to 4.1 volts per cell. So I'm gonna to have to change the Watchmon 7 to 4.2 volts top of charge, and similarly, the PCM60X to 29.4 volts, I believe. Plug the RJ45 cable into there. While that's opening up, we can plug in the USB into the computer. There we go, we're already on, COM port 5, so we we'll log in, password is an administrator. We click on the tools. Now our MPP tracker and the PCM60X is in 12 volt increments. So it comes down to 14.35 volts is 4.1 volts per cell. Now we want to take that up to 4.7 volts, I believe, and that will give us 29.4 volts as top of charge. So we have to change the battery absorption charging voltage to 14.7 and also the battery floating charge to 14.7 as well. Now you should never take this lightly. Cranking your lithium ion batteries up to 100%. Uh, now I've got battery op equalization set to disable and then we can close. So that'll send those settings up to the actual inverter itself and it'll start charging. Now we go over to the Batrium Watchmon 7. Now I believe I've already done this. Now you go to hardware, go to cell monitor, and we confirm that we're at 4.18 for top bypass voltage, which is probably nice and safe, but we'll change that to 4.1, 4.2, enter. We hit save, menu, and chart again. Now that's gonna quietly uh, roll along. It'll charge back up that battery all the way to 100%. And once we are at 100%, then we can proceed to run our test. Now that does mean we're gonna to have to turn the lights off, otherwise the batteries aren't gonna charge. So let's get this started. And as you can see, we've got 4.17 volts and 4.18 volts. I'm trying to work out the actual maximum of this. So I'm gonna to have to push that up just a little bit in voltage with the, what do you call it? MPP tracker software. So I've got 14.7 volts for the float and the absorption charge under customize. So I'm just going to push that up by 0.1 of a volt, which will be 0.2 at the other end. Ah, wait a minute. It does two decimal places. Not by half a volt. Apply. Okay. There we go. Apply. Okay. Close that down. Now we should see the amps start to rise up a little bit. So almost two amps going into the battery according to that. Two and a half amps. Let's see if we can open both of those at once. So it's saying about six amps there and about five amps there. So I'm not sure where that discrepancy comes from, whether it's just the power that's being used. Now we've got the fans just turned on. We've got one cell balancing, so it's saying that one cell is too high at the moment via Watch One Toolkit, and that's cell three. The fans are only ever activated once we go into a balancing stage, so they're not wasting energy at any other time other than when we need the cooling in this box. Let's finish getting this charged up to 4.2 volts, and we'll see you again soon. What have we got up there? Can we see that? Charging at 1.7 amps, 50 watts, 29.4 volts. So close enough to the top of charge. 
We're almost at top of charge. I must have done something wrong and only charged it up to 4.19 volts per cell. But they're all in balance at the moment, uh, according to the Watchmon Toolkit. Uh, we've got there, we can see, so we've got some cells at 4.2 volts and some at 4.19 volts. If we have a look at telemetry and then click over to, what have we got? Come on, cell information. We've got high cell volt. We've got one there that's going too high. But all the rest are nice and close. We are still in a charging state at the moment though, so that is probably not that accurate. We're still doing two amps into the batteries and we can only bypass current of about 0.5 of an amp. So that'll be why that's pushing a little bit high, but we're close enough to being fully charged to be able to start this test. Now we can isolate the solar with this switch here. So when I turn that off, the solar should disappear. There we go. Over on the Watchmon Toolkit over here, we can see menu, menu, chart, we're still at about 4.19 to 4.2 volts. Before I actually start this test, we'll go up to menu and then go down to hardware, and then we'll go to shunt. Now I wanna actually reset the amp hours and stuff like that. I've set it at approximately 160 amp hours, but I might change that to 200 amp hours, just so we can see exactly what it is, because I'm not sure whether it calibrates on the bottom. There we go. Now we also wanna go up to metrics here, and then we want to do uh, full. So it sets the battery as fully charged at the moment. So close that down, click on save, click on menu, click on chart. So we should have, uh, what have we got? Max, min, volt down the side there, 200 amp hours, 199. So state of charge is 99%. So we are good to start this test. It's going to be pretty anticlimactic starting this test. Turned on okay. And we've got lights. The cooling fans come on straight away as well. So we're drawing about 220 watts. Let's let that sit for a couple of days and see what we've got. Now, before I actually did this off camera, I did all the cell voltages to make sure the balance leads were correct between both packs. So we've got all the same cell voltages on the multimeter there as we do on the Watchmon Toolkit down here. The fans just shut down there in the little power distribution box. So I'll put that cover back on. Let's let this test run and see how far we get and how long it takes to get there. So that caught me a little bit by surprise. It dropped, the last time I looked, it was uh, 3.2 volts minimum. And within 20 minutes, I think, don't quote me, we'll have a look at the screenshot later. Um, it dropped to 3.04 volts now, and we got a high of 3.47 volts. Overall battery pack is 23.28 volts. So that's not bad for a recycled battery. Now, for anybody that hasn't caught up with me before or doesn't know about my channel while I was watching this for the first time, this is an 18650 back that I built um, from used laptop batteries. So let's run through some results or debunk some of the stuff that you'll see up here. Now, uh, I didn't go through when I did the video first, I set it at 200 amp hours uh, for the shunt trip and the capacity of the battery. I was basing that on, I looked around here, 175, 169, 166, 160, 165 amp hours per pack. What I didn't do is times that by two. Completely my mistake. The problem is I don't get all of the statistical data that I wanted to get on the Watchmon Toolkit, but that's my fault. It's, it's, it's not a program fault, it's the way I did it. I didn't really know the, the bottom charge of the inverter, but I do now, it's 21 volts. We're still at 23.26 volts, so we're still safe there. What I should do at this point is also grab the thermal camera out. And I mean, it's proper hot in here. It's probably 35 degrees at the moment. Have a look at all the batteries, pop the cover off here, show you inside of that if you haven't seen it before and actually do some thermal readings in there. We'll be able to learn a bit from that, see if we've got any um, bad connections and stuff like that. So 
Let's grab that now so we can turn this off and start recharging this battery again before we do any more damage to the lower cells. We're a day later and we had problems. Now we took those cells down to three volts. Um, that in itself is not a bad thing. The problem was this. Yep, we had a whole bunch of heater cells. I think you can see about five in the front, but there was heaps more um, in, in, in behind all the other cells. So like one or two or even four cells deep. So I spent an hour or so as soon as I got off camera, fixed all those issues, snipped all the, all the, the fuse wires and stuff like that. And it proves fuse, fuse wires don't help in that situation. They just sit there and accumulate heat until they go thermal. Um, I also put a massive floor fan on it. I pulled them all down. You know, so any of the cells at the back, I could get some floor fan onto it and get them cooled down quickly. Um, now I didn't take them out of the battery and I didn't record anything. Um, I tried to get some thermal camera footage, but it was, it was sketchy at best. Um, I think it was just so hot in here. As soon as I turned my phone on to start recording with a thermal camera, the phone overheated very, very quickly and the, the footage was almost unusable. But you do get the idea. So tubers, I'm gonna call that a success. Um, I found some problems with my wall. I now know it's got about nine to 10 kilowatt hours of storage. I know we got a couple that are a little bit lower than the rest, but I'm not even gonna worry about that. I will just set my highs and lows to account for that and use my battery management system to actually protect them a little bit more. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.